Welcome. You're almost done with AP Chemistry. All that's left is to get you ready for the big exam. And that's what we're here for now. Today, we're going to review one of the toughest units in the course, acid-base equilibrium. And we're going to look at free response questions, which are probably the most intimidating part of the exam. So let's get started. So today is about acids and bases. First, we're going to warm up with some representations like equations, titration curves, and particle diagrams. Then we are also going to talk about different types of acids and bases and properties of those acid and base solutions. We're gonna talk about a bunch of quantities and calculations that are related to this topic. And we'll also touch on a few other topics just to remind you that on the AP exam, you're gonna see everything. And all of the free response questions will have parts from multiple units. So we're gonna do a warm up first, and then we'll do some FRQs um, for most of the session. And I'm gonna go pretty fast. We're not going to dive too deep into explanations on things, um, but you can always go back to the AP Daily videos on unit eight, and there's a whole bunch of details for you there. So I encourage you to do that. All right, so first we're gonna look at some particle diagrams of some acid solutions. So um, there's equal volumes uh, in these four diagrams and water molecules are omitted. We've got a key over on the right that tells us what an acid molecule, an H plus ion and a conjugate base ion look like. Um, so first thing to do is label each one as weak or strong. So we need to remember that strong acids ionize completely and so there will be no acid molecules or HA uh, for a generic acid present in solution for a strong acid. And um, we'll only see H plus ions and conjugate base ions uh, or conjugate base molecules, depending on what we've got there. Um, weak acids will only ionize partially, okay? And so you're going to have some acid molecules that are undissociated in solution. And so based on that, we can say that representations one, two, and four are going to be weak because they have the undissociated molecules, the doublets, right? The gray circle paired with the gray, uh, white circle in, in these representations. Whereas representation three has only ions. It only has the dissociated um, form of the acid. And so that is a strong acid. Um, all right, so that's a quick review on that one. All right, now let's rank these solutions from lowest pH to highest pH. So we know we have equal volumes, that's important here. pH is determined by the H plus concentration or the hydronium ion concentration. The greater H plus is, the lower the pH is, right? And so all of these solutions have equal volumes that means that we can just count up the H plus ions in order to figure out which one is the most concentrated and which one is the least. Um, and then we can rank the pH uh, from there. So representation three has three H plus, representation one has one H plus, representation two has four, and representation four has one. So four is the biggest number here, and that means that it has the lowest pH. Uh, so, oh, sorry, two, uh, representation two, which has four hydrogen ions, sorry about that. So two, representation two is the lowest pH, and then three, and then one and four are equal because they each have one hydrogen ion. So they have the lowest number of hydrogen ions, which means they have the highest pH. So you gotta remember that kind of inverse relationship, more H plus or concentration is lower in pH. All right. Last one on this uh, set of representations. So now which solution would require the largest number of moles of sodium hydroxide, a common strong base to neutralize it? And which would require the smallest number of moles? So to neutralize an acid completely, a base reacts with every acid particle present in the solution, regardless of whether it's weak or strong. Um, and so to determine this, we just need to figure out which solution is the most concentrated in terms of acid, and that one will require the most sodium hydroxide to neutralize it. 
Um, and the least concentrated solution, therefore, will require the least sodium hydroxide. So looking at our representations, we can see that representation four has the largest concentration, so it's going to require the largest number of moles. And representation three has the smallest concentration, the fewest um, acid molecules, looks like three acid molecules in that solution. So um, that's how we would rank it. Oh, I'm sorry, we have one more on this. There's so many things you can do with particle diagrams. So this time though, we're just gonna focus on representation four um, and representation four, um, we're gonna try to calculate Ka. So let's look at the question here. Assume that each particle represents a concentration of 0.01 molar, estimate the value of Ka for the acid in representation four. So we've got to write the Ka expression. So that's an important thing to remember. Um, and when we do that, we see that we have the um, ions that the products of the acid dissociation in the numerator, and then we have the acid concentration um, HA in the denominator. That's our unionized acid. So we need to count. We've got a 16 HA molecules, one A, mi A minus ion or conjugate base and one H plus um, ion. And each one of those represents 0 0.01 molar. So then we can plug in our values to the Ka expression and calculate a value of Ka um, from this particle diagram. So these representations, particle diagrams, um, you will see them on the exam. I don't know if you'll see them in the acid-base context, but it's really important to be able to interpret them. So let's look at um, another type of representation that you're gonna see a lot on um, as, acids and base, acid and base questions, um, titration curves. So pH is on the y-axis and volume of titrin added is going to be on the x-axis. And here we have three different curves for three different weak acids. Um, and the prompt tells us that the graph shows um, titration curves for equal volume samples of three different acids. And each sample was titrated with a 0 0.10 molar um, sodium hydroxide solution. So they're equal volumes of acid and they were titrated with um, the same base solution. So that's helpful information to allow us to compare these acids based on this titration curve. All right, so rank the acids from most concentrated to least concentrated. So we, in order to talk about the concentration of an analyte solution in a titration, you gotta know what the equivalence point volume is. And so the equivalence point is the middle of the vertical part of the curve. And um, this in this particular graph, we can see that all three acids have the same equivalence point volume. It's at 25 milliliters. Uh, and all three uh, acids were equal in concentrate um, in volume, and they were titrated with a sodium hydroxide solution of equal concentration. So therefore, given that they have the same equivalence point volume, they've got to be equally concentrated, these acids. We could calculate it, um, but that's not what we were asked to do here. We, we don't need to calculate the acid concentration to know that they have equal concentration because of the situation that we we're in. Okay, so now let's take this same graph and rank the acids from strongest to weakest. So which of these three acids is the strongest? Well, we need to focus on the initial pH. So the pH before the titration started, before any base was added. And the initial pH, of course, is at zero milliliters. So at the y-intercept on this graph, so HF um, is about 2.2, KHP about 3.4, HOCl is the highest initial pH um, at 4.3. So um, the acid that has the lowest initial pH is the strongest because we can say that with confidence because we know that all three of them are equally concentrated. Um, and if they're all equally concentrated, then lower pH means that um, the acid has a greater H3O plus concentration, right? And greater H3O plus concentration implies that it has ionized to a greater degree, which is what mean what we mean when we say how strong is the acid? To what degree does it ionize at a given concentration? So um, therefore we can say that HF is, um, is the strongest of these three weak acids followed by KHP, followed by HOCl by ranking their initial pH. All right, next one on this. 
identify the species present in the greatest concentration or greatest amount other than water in the HOCl solution, so the red one, um, after 15 milliliters of titrant was added. So first, let's pick out where 15 milliliters is on this, um, on this titration curve. Well, there it is. 15 milliliters is after the half equivalence point. So that's the key idea here. Um, the half equivalence point is going to be 12.5 12 because the equivalence point was 25 milliliters. And after the half equivalence point, that means that we have a more of the conjugate base form because more than half of the initial acid molecules have reacted with the titrant solution to form the conjugate base. And the uh, conjugate base is going to be OCL minus in this case, and it is going to be present in the greatest amount after the half equivalence point. At the half equivalence point, they're equal. Below the half equivalence point, you have more of the acid present, right? So the correct answer here is OCL minus. Um, and let's see, last set of warm up questions. We're going to focus on these KB values in this table. You're going to see a lot of KA and KB values on the AP exam. And so, how do we interpret these values? Well, in this particular set, we have three, ammonia, hydrazine, and aniline. And we can notice right away that ammonia has the largest KB value and aniline has the smallest KB, KB value. So the question asks us, rank the pH of these of equimolar solutions of these three substances at 25 degrees Celsius from least to greatest. All right, so for bases, remember a stronger base has the higher pH. And um, the strongest base is going to be the one that has the largest value of Kb. And so ammonia here is going to be the highest pH. And by the same reasoning, aniline, which has the lowest Kb value, is going to have the lowest pH. And then hydrazine is in the middle. Um, so the correct answer here, we were asked to rank from least to greatest. Well, we said that the smallest KB is aniline. So that is going to be the least followed by hydrazine. And then the highest pH is the strongest base with the largest KB value. And that is ammonia. And one more set of questions with us. Um, write the formula of the conjugate acid for each substance. All right, so remember how to write a conjugate acid from a base. The conjugate acid uh, is always eight, you add H plus to form the conjugate acid. So we take ammonia, we make ammonium ion NH4 plus, that is the conjugate acid. N2H4 hydrazine, conjugate acid is N2H5 plus. And last but not least, aniline C6H5 NH2, um, we make the conjugate acid is C6H5 and H3 plus. All right, now we've made, we've written the formulas for these conjugate acids. We need to rank them from strongest acid to weakest acid. So in order to do this, um, we need to remember that the weakest base will have the strongest conjugate acid. And you may remember that the relationship KW equals KA times KB, for a conjugate acid base pair. Kw is the ionization, ionization constant for pure water, auto ionization, and it's a constant at a given temperature. And so that means that if Ka is bigger, Kb is smaller and vice versa. They have an inverse relationship. So based on that, we can say, well, the conjugate base of aniline has to be the strongest, or conjugate acid of aniline has to be the strongest because aniline is the weakest base. And so um, therefore the correct answer here is aniline is stronger. Um, the conjugate of aniline is stronger than the conjugate of hydrazine, which is stronger than the con conjugate of ammonia. Um, all right, last warm up question. And then we're gonna do some free response. Um, see, put all this stuff to work. Uh, write a net ionic equation for the reaction of NH4Cl with water. All right, so we just discovered that ammonium ion NH4 plus is the conjugate of a weak base and is therefore a weak acid that reacts with water to produce hydronium ions. So that's going to react with water. Cl minus is the conjugate of a strong acid. 
HCL is a strong acid. That means that its conjugate base does not have any base activity. It's a neutral ion. And so um, the only reaction that's going to occur when ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, um, is placed in water and dissolves is the acid dissociation of ammonium ion. Here's the equation for that. Um, and so then is a solution of NH4Cl acidic, basic, or neutral? Well, we just wrote the equation up here um, that shows the production of H3O plus ions. And so therefore um, it's gotta be acidic, right? Because we're making H3O plus. So um, the reaction of NH4 plus produces the hydronium um, ions that as seen in the equation and that lowers the pH. So therefore this is acidic. All right, we are ready to attack some free response. This is an image of the formula sheet. Uh, it's a part of the formula sheet um, from the AP Chem exam. I put this in here just to remind you that it is your friend on the free response. Um, it has lots of things that will be useful to you. You might not remember them. Um, many equations and constants um, related to this unit and others are found on the formula sheet. Um, so just a few, for example, for this particular unit, uh, the Ka and Kb expressions, relationships um, about pH, uh, the Henderson-Hasselbach um, equation for buffers, which can be useful in interpreting buffers. Um, and this is just one section of the formula sheet. There's also sections about gases and all the other topics that you're going to be um, tested on on the exam. So um, I'll let you know as we go through the free response, like which equations are found on the formula sheet and which ones are not in particular that you need to remember. Um, all right, so let's do some practice. Um, we're gonna do free response. Here's a QR code for the free response questions that we're going to do. Um, and these are all based on actual FRQs from previous exams, um, but they've been modified just to make new questions, um, just to change things, to make fresh questions, uh, since many students have already done a lot of the released uh, questions. Uh, so these will be fresh challenges for you, um, never before seen questions. All right, our first one is about uh, carboxylic acids. Um, so use the information in the table um, to answer the question. So we have a Ka table here, two, two acids, HCOOH, which is methanoic acid, CH3COOH, which is ethanoic acid. So first question, which of the two acids is stronger? Um, justify your answer in terms of Ka. Well. The, the acid that has the larger value of Ka is the stronger acid, as we talked about in our warm up. Um, and so this is an appropriate answer. You have to justify. If, if the prompt says justify your answer, you need to explain. And it tells you to do that in terms of Ka. So that is what this response does. It has a larger value. All right. Part B or part II, AII, the conjugate bases of ethanoic acid and methanoic acid um, are the ethanoate ion and the methanoate ion, respectively. Which of the two ions, methanoate or ethanoate, is more stable? So um, the stronger an acid is, the more stable its conjugate base um, ion is. And that is an important relationship that sometimes gets glossed over. Um, so the HCOO minus the um, methanoate ion, also sometimes called formate, um, is the more stable ion um, because it is more likely to form from HCOOH or methanoic acid than the ethanoate ion is to form from ethanoic acid. Um, so that is a relationship between um, ion stability and the conjugate acid that is important to know. All right, so here is a curveball, right? This is not an acid base question, but every free response is going to have parts from multiple units. So you got to be able to bring all of your chemistry knowledge to free response questions. So Lewis dots are in unit two. We're not going to do a whole tutorial on Lewis dots today, um, but we do, of course, have AP daily videos on them. Um, here is the Lewis dot structure for. Um, the HCOOH, methanoic acid, um, 
molecule. And my one tip to remember here is just be sure you count electrons and follow the octet rule unless it is a known exception. Um, so that is that. Let's move on to part B. Um, so here we have a nice titration curve. Um, a 10 milliliter sample of a solution of one of the two acids is titrated with 0 0.0875 molar NaOH. A graph of the titration is shown below. All right, so we got this nice titration curve. First thing, what is the concentration? So we gotta find the equivalence point volume. Remember the equivalence point is here. Um, and the volume at that point is about 14.3 milliliters. If we're calculating concentration, we've got to convert to liters, right? Because concentration is moles per liter. So um, here's my equivalence point volume. Here is the volume in liters. Now I just need to find the moles of base that were added. So the moles of the titrant, um, I need to multiply the concentration that was given 0.0875 by the volume. And that gives me the number of moles. And I've got to remember that the moles of base is equal to the moles of acid in this case. Um, it's a one-to-one -one, um, reaction because we have a monoprotic acid here. And so then the molarity of the acid is just the number of moles of acid, which is equivalent to the moles of base. And then I need to divide by the um, 10 milliliters of acid that were titrated here. Um, but of course I need that to be in liters. And so 0 0.0100 liters, and that gives me 0 0.125 molar. That is the concentration. I'm gonna circle this answer um, and just remind you or, or tell you that if you've done a whole bunch of calculations and you probably maybe didn't do them super neatly or you had to cross some things out and draw some arrows, it's always a good idea to circle your final answer um, so that the person who's scoring your exam called the reader knows what your final answer is and there's no ambiguity there. So um, circle those answers on calculations. All right, now we're going on to BII. Which acid was titrated, ethanoic, or methanoic, justify your answer. Oh boy. Um, so this requires you to find the half equivalence point and to remember something important, which is that at the half equivalence point, um, the um, pH is equal to the pKa of the acid. Um, and so we need to calculate pKa. Um, the pH here at the half equivalence point, it's about 4.7. Um, and here are the Ka values in that table that were given at the very top of the question, right? We've got to remember to go back to the given information and use that to answer this question like five points later. And that's one of the important things about a free response question is it's kind of imperative to um, keep the thread going. Sometimes your answer from one part is used in another part. Sometimes the given information at the very top is used all the way down the page. Um, so here we have that acid table. We're going to calculate the pKa um, for these two acids. It's equal to the negative log of the Ka. Um, and when you do that math, you get a value of 3.74 for the HCOOH, and you get a value of 4.74 for the CH3COOH or ethanoic acid. So clearly 4.74 is closer, right? To the pKa of um, this particular acid that was just titrated because we saw the pH at the half equivalence point was 4.7. So we can then say ethanoic um, at the half equivalence point pH equals pKa, and the half equivalence point is 7.2 milliliters, it's half of 14.3, and the pH is about 4.7 there, which is much closer to the pKa of ethanoic acid than that of methanoic acid. And here's another tip for you. Oh, here's the math um, that we did up on the right side here, um, the pKa calculations. So you can see those done out. Um, all right, another tip. Um, is to, um, when a question asks you to make a choice and justify, state your choice first. So in this question, we were asked which acid was titrated, ethanoic or methanoic, and then justify. So of course you need to explain, right? But you don't wanna forget to say what your answer was and you want the reader to know unambiguously what 
choice you are making, you also don't want to forget in the, in the midst of making your explanation. If you're not sure what you want to choose before you write your explanation, then leave yourself a little space and start writing your explanation. So you can go back and be sure to put your choice nice and clear right at the front. All right. Um, so write the equation for the reaction that occurs between methanoic acid and water in a methanoic acid solution. What do acids do? Acids donate protons to water, right? So they give up H plus to water. So you can write this in one of two ways. You can write it in sort of a Bronsted-Lowry style, which means you add, um, water acts as a reactant um, and you produce hydronium ions, or you can just show the acid reversibly dissociating into um, ions, which we would say is more of the Arrhenius style. Either one is accepted. So either of these two equations on the exam would be um, acceptable here. Remember, you need the reversible arrow because this is a weak acid, so it's not going um, completely to products. It's not going to completion. All right, part D. This question goes on and on, right? That's what free, long free response questions do. Um, a buffer solution is prepared by dissolving some solid uh, sodium uh, methanoate in a solution of methanoic acid, HCOOH. The pH of the buffer solution is determined to be 4.22. So first thing, calculate the value of H3O plus, the hydronium ion concentration in the solution. Uh, so for this, you need to use an equation that actually is not on the formula sheet. So you got to remember this one or be able to derive it. Um, so H3O plus is equal to 10 to the power of the minus pH. Um, so that's the equation you need to use here. And you do have to remember that or be able to derive it. 10 to the minus 4.22 is 6.0 times 10 to the minus fifth. And you will notice that this 6.0 has only two sig figs. And that is because in a pH value, only the digits that are after the decimal point are significant. So a pH of 4.22 has two sig figs. So it's an exception to the general rules for sig figs. Uh, and so therefore the concentration can only have two sig figs. So that's a little tricky. Um, II, which is present in greater concentration in this buffer solution, um, the methanoate ion or methanoic acid, justify your answer. All right, so we got to go back to this pH, um, pKa relationship here. Um, and so we know at the, when pH is equal to pKa, we have equal amounts of the acid, HCOOH, and the conjugate base, the HCOO minus um, ion. Above that pH, we have more of the base form, the conjugate base. Um, below that pH, we have more of the conjugate acid. Well, we got to look at this one. 4.22 is the pH of the solution that we are given. And so we need to find the pKa. Um, and when we do that, we see that the pKa is 3.74. We already did that in the titration part, but we can remember here. So um, 3.74. So 4.22 is higher. So this solution is at a higher pH. And that means that we have more of the base um, form present. So HCOO minus will be present in greater concentration. Um, and here's a, an explanation that's basically what I just said. Okay, um, write the net ionic equation for the reaction that will occur if a few drops of 12 molar HCl are added to this buffer solution. So HCl is a strong acid, of course, um, and that's something you just have to know um, what the strong acids are. So a strong acid is going to react with the base component of any buffer. Um, and so the acid will neutralize the base component of the buffer and produce water and the acid component of the buffer. So um, you can write this either way in the Bronsted-Lowry style or in the um, Arrhenius style. So um, you can see that the base component HCOO minus is what is reacting and uh, being neutralized by the acid. Um, so there's a neutralization reaction going on. All right, so what should you take away from doing this first long FRQ on acids? Well, let's take a look. Here's our equation. First thing we did was 
greater Ka, greater acid strength. Then stronger acid, more stable conjugate base ion. You got to review your Lewis structures. I promise you they will come up on the exam. Might not be in an acid base question, but they will be there. Um, we learned to use the equivalence point volume to find concentration. We learned that or remember that pH equals pKa at the half equivalence point, and you'll use that relationship quite a lot, I imagine. Acid dissociation is always the same kind of reaction. The acid acts as a proton donor. Um, this relationship um, to calculate the H3O plus concentration if pH is known is not on the formula sheet, so you got to remember it. In a buffer, when the pH is greater than the pKa, then the conjugate base form is in greater concentration than the conjugate acid form. Um, and of course, the opposite is also true. Um, and in a buffer, if you add H+, it will react with the base component of the, uh, of the buffer. All right, so the one question down, let's try another. Um, so each of the three beakers shown here contains 50 milliliters of a 0 0.10 molar solution of HC2H3O2, NaC2H3O2, or HCl as shown at right. Each solution is at 25 degrees Celsius. All right, before we dive into all these questions about it, let's take a look at these beakers and see what we have here, because that's going to inform our answers to every part of this question. So in beaker one, I have a um, weak acid solution, right? HC2H3O2. Um, in beaker two, I have a solution of the sodium salt of the conjugate base of that weak acid that's in beaker one. So that's an important thing to notice here. And in beaker three, I have a strong acid. So I have three different kinds of solutions going on here. Um, all right, part A, calculate the pH of the solution in beaker three. Justify your answer. So that word justify is telling us we better show some work or give some explanation, right? Um, we can't just put the answer because we won't get the point. Um, and that's so sad if you know the answer. So um, beaker three uh, is our strong acid, which is great because calculating the pH of a strong acid just requires taking um, the negative log of the acid concentration because whatever the acid concentration is for a strong acid is the concentration of hydronium ion. So we just need to take the negative log. Or in this case, um, it's actually really easy to see that this is 10 to the minus two power is the concentration. So the pH has to be two. But that can be a trap because if you just calculated the pH in your head and wrote two down and you didn't explain or show calculations, you wouldn't have earned this point. So you have to, to justify. All right, in beaker one, the reaction represented below occurs. So we see this reaction between HC2H3O2 and water. It's an acid dissociation reaction. Um, and then we're told the value of Ka for HC2H3O2 is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. Great. So write the Ka expression for the reaction of HC2H3O2 with water, Ka's, it's always going to be the products of the acid dissociation, the hydronium ion and the conjugate base ion, divided by the acid concentration at equilibrium. Um, so, and of course, water is omitted because it is a pure liquid, so it doesn't appear in K expressions. All right, now we've got to do the calculations for H3O plus in the solution um, in beaker one. So now this is this is harder than the strong acid, right? Because we have to use the Ka expression here and the value of Ka to calculate the um, H3O plus. So we're going to let um, H3O plus concentration equal the um, conjugate base concentration, C2H3O2 minus. Um, those two are equal because this is a one-to-one -one reaction and those products are going to be produced in equal amounts. And so they're going to be X. So Ka is therefore equal to x squared, these two um, products multiplied by each other, divided by the um, initial concentration of the acid minus x, whatever amount dissociates um, to reach equilibrium. 
However, um, because the X is going to be very small in this case, because we know that Ka is quite a small number relative to the concentration, we can ignore it in the denominator. So we can ignore X and then solve or ignore X in the denominator and solve for X in the numerator um, using this relationship. Um, Ka times the initial concentration of the acid and all of that to the one half power square root. Um, and that gives us the concentration of, um, of 4.2 times 10 to the minus fourth. And remember that X is equal to H3O plus. So that answers that question. So this is an example of using what's called the small X approximation to solve for a um, species in an equilibrium expression. And that comes up kind of a lot. Um, I'm going to circle my answer because I did a whole lot of calculations there. And it's always a good idea. All right. Let's move on to part C. The reaction represented by the net ionic equation shown below occurs in beaker two. Um, all right. So here we have a base hydrolysis reaction. So uh, base ion is reacting with water to produce the conjugate acid and hydroxides. This is a characteristic reaction of a weak base. Um, and so we need to calculate the value of Kb for this reaction. Well, luckily for us, we know the Ka for the conjugate acid because it was given back in the previous part, right? So we've got to use that information here that was given earlier in the question. Um, and remember our relationship, Kw equals um, Ka times Kb. And we know Kw is a constant. If you forgot that, luckily for you, it is on the formula sheet. So um, it's just another reminder to use your formula sheet to help you find relationships or values that you might have forgotten. Um, so the value of Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. We divide by the Ka that was given in the earlier part, and that gives us Kb, which is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10th. Um, and then part ii is... Um, the contents of beaker one are poured into beaker two. So we're combining these two um, solutions um, and this new solution is stirred, this mixture. Calculate the pH of the resulting solution. Well, we have just combined a solution of a um, weak acid with an equimolar equal volume solution of its conjugate base. What does that sound like? Well, that is an ideal buffer. We've combined equal numbers of moles of a weak acid, HC2H3O2, and its conjugate base, C2H3O2 minus. So we've made an ideal buffer, which has equal um, numbers of moles of um, an acid and conjugate base. So when that is true, the pH is equal to the pKa. So we can just take the negative log and look at that, 4.74. Um, so the pH of this solution is 4.74. And let's see, let's circle that just for good measure. All right. Oh, particle, di particle diagram question. So which of the diagrams at right shows the particles of Na plus? C2H3O2 minus and HC2H3O2 present in the resulting solution in numbers proportional to the relative concentrations. Note that water molecules are omitted and justify your choice. All right, well, we added 50 milliliters of HC2H3O2 at 0.01 molarity, 50 milliliters of 0.01 molar sodium ions, and 50. Um, and C2H3O2 minus ions in that same solution. Um, so we added equal numbers of moles of these three particles into our solution, um, our mixture. And so therefore in our particle diagram, if they're gonna be proportional to the solution that we made, we need to have equal numbers of particles of each of these three things. Um, and so which of these diagrams has equal numbers of particles of our three um, components and represents the solution that we made when we combine those two beakers together. Well, it's the one on the bottom left. It has six uh, particles of each of the three species present. And so therefore um, the bottom left beaker is the right answer. It has equal concentrations of the three particles and that is what is expected when you combine equimolar amounts of the three particles to form a solution. 
And of course, in the absence of a reaction in which they made something new by combining with each other, um, you didn't have to say that last part in parentheses. I just put it there for clarity. Um, so this answer would earn you credit. Um, so this is the right one there. And um, uh, let's see each. OK, so part D, the question goes on. Uh, the contents of beaker three are poured into the solution made in part CII. So now we've combined all three of these beakers into one big beaker, right? So we have one solution that contains all three of these things. Um, write the net ionic equation for the reaction that takes place when the solution in beaker three is added. Okay. Well, beaker three is a strong acid, right? HCl. So what do strong acids do when they are added to a buffer solution? They react with the base component, right? So we need to write a reaction between the H plus ions from the HCl and the base component of our buffer, C2H3O2 minus. So you, you can, this is the, um, or this is the Bronsted Lowry version of the equation where we take the hydronium ion, we add the acetate ion, and we end up with water and our um, conjugate acid. And then the last part of this question is probably the trickiest part. Um, and this question was hard when it was given back in 2011, um, it, or a very similar version. Um, so is the resulting solution an effective buffer? Well, we had an ideal buffer. And then we added an equal number of moles of strong acid um, to the amount of the weak acid and the conjugate base that were present in our ideal buffer. So this strong acid is going to react with all of the conjugate base that is there because we've added an equal amount of strong acid. So it's going to consume all of the base component of the buffer. And what's gonna be left is just the conjugate acid form of um, the buffer. If there's not any conjugate base present, then it's no longer a buffer because buffers have um, comparable amounts, approximately equal um, amounts of the conjugate acid and base form. Uh, so this is not no longer an effective buffer once we add all that strong acid to it. So we've added strong acid um, and virtually all of the C2H3O2 minus in the solution will react with the H3O plus from solution one. And that's gonna leave us with only the acid form. And because the solution does not contain significant amounts of both members of the pair, it is not an effective buffer. Okay, so what can we take away? Oh, well, and here's the math. Um, so I threw this in there. If you're, if you're more of a math person, um, the buffer solution produced in CI contains 5.0 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of um, the conjugate base form. And when you add the same number of moles of H3O plus from the HCl, it consumes all of that. That's a one-to-one -one reaction. And so it's gonna consume all of it. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. Like I said, that last part was the, probably the hardest point on this question. So what do we take away from this? Well, first of all, it's important to know what you have because each of these types of solutions does different things. We have weak acid, weak base, and strong acid. And um, the pH in beaker three, um, we just calculated the pH by taking the negative log um, of the acid concentration because it was strong acid. Um, Ka expressions, we practiced writing those. We remembered that if Ka is much, much less than the initial acid concentration, then we can simplify using a small x approximation, the process of calculating the H3O plus concentration. Um, we used this relationship between Kw, Ka, and Kb to calculate a Kb. Uh, we remembered that pH is equal to pKa in an ideal buffer. Um, we used the number of particles present to judge the relative amounts in a particle diagram. So we translated between a scenario and particle diagrams um, by using proportional reasoning. And that's an important piece of analyzing a particle diagram, whether it's acid base or something else. In order to be a buffer, both components of a weak acid conjugate base pair are needed. 
Um, and if they if they are not there, then you don't have a buffer. In, in a buffer, you add strong acid, it will react with the conjugate base. All right. Well, we are about to um, run up against our time. So I don't think that we are going to be able to do our very last question, um, but that's okay. We did a lot of really good stuff today. Um, and we do have eight AP daily live review sessions. Uh, four have already happened and you can see them on YouTube, the videos. Um, this is the fifth one. And then we have three more coming up. Um, so I encourage you to watch them all. Um, we have two QR codes here. Uh, the one on the left is for feedback. I would really love your feedback. Did I go too fast, too slow, too easy, too hard? I promise I'm gonna read it before the next session. So tell me what you think. Um, if you have any suggestions, whoops. Um, so there's the QR codes. And then the handouts for the next three sessions are also um, on the QR code or the link on the right. Um, and, you know, just keep practicing. It's the key to being successful. You're doing something hard and keep at it um, and you're gonna do great. So um, thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you at the next one.